Hi, I'm Nita. And I'm Sinead. And today we're showing you how to connect your Sintang Lopper to your Hayate Pole Saw. your sing tang lopper onto your Hayate pole saw, which is this bright yellow one here. So we've got a couple so, of different options. So. Yeah, so if you've purchased the sing tang lopper and you also have purchased the Hayachi pole saw, that's the one with the black handle, you do not need to watch this video. <laughs> but uh, if you've got the yellow one, as Sinead said, the Hayate, this video is for you. Yeah, so this is the sing tang lopper. So the unique thing about this particular lopper, it's a ratchet lopper mm. so you got the three little notches at the end so when the um, when you are pruning up so high and you can feel a little bit of a tension you can just let the let the string go um, and then this will click into the next option and I'll pass it through you need to explain it <laughs> Yeah, so as Sinead mentioned, this is a ratchet lopper, which is fabulous because a lot of loppers aren't. So it means you've got to pull that rope a really long way down. And often people don't have arms long enough to do that. So the ratchet mechanism means you don't have to do that. And the other thing that's fabulous is this parrot beak shape here. A lot of your loppers are sort of like scissors that, that are like this and you have to strategically be able to get those blades underneath the limb you want to cut which is really difficult and particularly when we're talking 7.7 .7 meters up with one of the longest Hayate pole saws. So this parrot beak hook is fabulous for being able to just loop over the branch you want to cut, hold it in place while you pull that rope. But being ratchet, when you pull that rope you just want to pull it far enough for that blade to just bite into the branch you're cutting. Then you release the rope and what it will do is it will then lock into the first of these three notchy sections here um, there is probably a very good technical name for them but we have no idea what it is so I just call them a little notchy section I don't know maybe it's a gear like they have on 10 speed bikes but anyway <laughs> it locks into the first one then you pull the rope again a bit further so it bites a bit further into the net in the branch and then release that rope again and it will lock into the next one and so forth and so forth so that's how that ratchet system works. And should you have the 7.7 .7 meter pole saw, in the bag it also comes with an additional rope. Yeah. So you can tie that additional rope to the end of this one, which will then allow you to have a longer reach, obviously. But that's how the ratchet works. Brilliant. So, how to stick the sing tongue lopper onto your mm. Hayate pole saw. So, when you are Grab when you are getting the sing tongue lopper, you will also need to purchase an additional um, pipe. So this is the pipe, and you'll come with two bolts at the back. So what you're going to do is first, um, you're going to stick the pipe onto the sing tongue lopper before sticking it onto your Hayate pole saw. So I'll just quickly demonstrate now for you. So what you want to do is unscrew the screw. It's also got a washer, so please be mindful not to lose that. Um, an ideal space to be doing this is on a workbench or um, on a bench or we're so, limited being yeah. in our showroom. In fact, we're in our arborist showroom at the moment. Yes. So this is our second showroom where we have all of our arb gear. And we all have, also have a bit of uh, survivalism outdoor stuff around, around about us as well. But yeah, this is the room we're in today. So we're working on an awesome silky box table setup. <laughs> uh, but don't despair. If you do accidentally drop the nuts or the washer or the screw somewhere in your shed and it bounces somewhere and you can't find it again, they're not particularly unusual. They're quite, uh, quite a normal screw and washer and nut set so if you lose them you can just pop down to your bolt shop and grab another set exactly so what you're going to do is you're going to slide you've now got your pipe out of the bag you're going to slide it through to inside the pipe and you're going to paste it back on the bench so what I find very handy to do is to when putting the screw in when connecting the pipe and the lopper together to have this pulley system um, facing you and to slide the screws in like so. So that way when you are um, pruning up out in the um, yard you don't have the rope getting caught on that um, bit of screw that's popping out. So what you're going to do is marry it up. So the, the actual connector pipe itself has like an elbow that sticks out. That doesn't have to fully go into the pole. All you're trying to do is marry up where those holes are for the screw to slide through. So it kind of just sits a little bit out from that neck elbow section of the connector pipe. 
The other thing with the Centang Lopper is all the parts are available and replaceable. So should you accidentally hook your spring on a branch and it stretches it or it pings off into no man's land, um, just contact us because you can get replacement bits and pieces. All right, so you have attached the pipe to the sing tongue lopper and now you're going to grab your pole saw. So I have in my hands the five meter Hayate pole saw and I'm going to get the lovely Unita. When limited in space we have to be creative. <laughs> <laughs> so first before you place the lopper onto the pole, uh, make sure that these levers are facing you. It makes it so much more easier when extending it and it's the only way it will go. It will fit. <laughs> so, so these levers right here, have them facing you when you're placing them on. Um, you will also need the, on your Hayate mm. um, blade, you'll need to grab these bright yellow bolts. And they're fabulous, these bolts, aren't they? Japan's made them with these great big plastic heads, which are really easy to tighten or loosen just with your fingers. So you don't yeah. need a screwdriver or anything. So for this part here, you're gonna need your two bolts and the mm. two, uh, two screws, sorry, and your two bolts at the end. Yeah, so those nuts that were on the outside of the connector pipe packet when you received it. Yep. So when I say have the levers facing you, having this parrot beak facing you too, then you just slide it on like so, and marry up the hole, just place it in, and then you're going to use your bolts, to put it all together. Make sure all these are nice and tight. And there you go. Done, now easy. have the lopper attached to your pole saw. So you can see that you've got your bright, bright bolts here and also the two smaller bolts, um, two smaller screws here. So that's all there is to it. You're ready now to go out and do some beautiful tip pruning or trimming, whatever you needed yep. your Sintang lopper for. Quick little tip about using the Sintang lopper. When you do use it, um, be mindful that a lot of humans, unless you're a drummer, have a tendency when one arm moves in one direction the other arm tends to want to move in the other direction I don't know why but <laughs> I, I find that happens with me um, so what some people find will happen is when they pull that rope they will inadvertently lift the other arm so to avoid that happening because you don't want to do that because what you could actually end up creating is a bit of damage on your smallest pole by doing that because you're putting excessive force on it so to stop you from accidentally pushing that pole up in the air I kind of anchor it either to my body or on the ground to stop me from moving it with my arm accidentally or sort of tucking my elbow into my stomach. But just be mindful that when you're pulling that rope down, you're not accidentally pushing the, black, um, the pole up into the air as well. Yeah. And if you only have the Hayate pole saw um, in, your, in your shed or wherever you keep it, <laughs> you don't have to take this whole assembly apart to use your blade. All you need to do is to take these bright, we'll just flip it around. All you need to do is take these bright yellow bolts out, put these um, screws, sorry, put these bolts in a nice secure place um, and then away you go. You can just replace the part on. and yeah, you don't have to take the lopper off the pipe itself. Mm. Yeah, so it can stay there forevermore. Unless, like Sinead said, you've got a high arch and then you'll need to put it into use for that one. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I hope if we hope you enjoy this video. If you have any questions or inquiries, please don't hesitate to let us know. Towards the end of this video, we will include a short video on the ratchet lopper with more information on how the ratchet system works, um, and these little notches here with um, with the what you need was explaining before yeah. with the play. And Explain so well. <laughs> and we'll also include another video with how to raise your silky pole saw and which pole to pull out first when extending. It. Unbelievably confusing for <laughs> such a simple task. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I don't know if it's a gear or what it is, but anyway, it's three little things that look like little notches like that, and it locks into them each time you lift it up high enough. So pull it down again until it bites a bit further into your branch, release the rope, it'll lock into the next section there. And then you pull again and it should have fully cut through that branch, which is fabulous. So, um... Did that hurt? <laughs> you weren't supposed to say that. <laughs> yes, it squashed my finger. <laughs> Don't leave your finger there when you release it. <laughs> Lucky that was the non-cutty bit, just the squashy bit. Yeah. <laughs> totally squashed. <laughs>